Vincent will share the screen. I will take over like the first couple of slides, then I will pass on to him. He's a bit more on the technical side. So just to introduce myself, Marcel Mutz, my name, working at AWSI. We are a digitization institute. Um, and yeah, I'm the responsible for a research group um, where like the battery project, uh, projects are located. And Vincent is um, also part of that. So today it's about DigiBudMud and as maybe some new project participants uh, might not know our project, I guess it makes sense to again give a quick overview of what we are doing. Um, and then Vincent will go a bit deeper into like ontology development and the functionalities on the software side. And yeah, I mean the, the interconnection of both of it. Okay, so maybe let's first of all uh, go a bit into why we are doing the project. Um, so data management and battery research is kind of a, a problem at the moment. Um, why is that? Um, well, at research in institutes and in the research and development departments of uh, companies, also larger um, battery production companies, um, the data management process is very manual. Yeah, um, Kind of resulting out of the fact that also lab processes are very manual. Um, so also the data management is pretty manual. Um, that means they are using a lot of Excel sheets, uh, a lot of unstructured data are storing uh, it kind of in documents, in folder structures, sometimes in decentralized databases, maybe sometimes on hardware itself, um, sometimes on a cloud server, sometimes centralized, but um, like most of the institutes and uh, companies are not really using a structured database to really uh, consolidate the data that they generate, um, making it at the moment impossible to really compare data over multiple projects. Yeah, So at least at the institutes, it's uh, not that easy to really combine data of two projects, even if they did kind of a similar approach uh, on the battery production side, as well as the material side. So currently there is also uh, no software available on the market that is applied where you can really put production data and material data together and link it to each other uh, so you can easily handle it. Um, that leads to a pretty time consuming process in the battery research field um, because there's a lot of manual uh, yeah, post-processing also done, um, plots are generally also on a, on a manual level um, created um, every time new ones. And there are also on the analysis part, um, a lot of problems that come in, in place because of the data uh, that cannot really be stored and linked together. Uh, so it's at the moment really problematic because the battery itself is such a complex system. Um, to get a real understanding of uh, the cause and effects relationships of material and production data. So that means machine parameters and material composition information to the, um, the quality of the finished cell. Um, another problem is also that there are different scales of, uh, of research and production. So that means there's a uh, difference between like lab scale, between uh, pilot scale, and then in the end, like real production line. And uh, the comparability of data between these scales is also not existing at all. Yeah, and um, if we would have a, a database where you could put everything together over multiple uh, years, um, it would also be possible to apply maybe further and more complex analysis to get more insights into the, the <clears throat> causality um, in terms of the production um, and the parameters. So then, Vincent, you can go one slide further. So what we are doing in DigiBudMart now for the past like two and a half years, a bit more than two and a half years, um, is that we want to develop a solution for that. We want to develop a data management a solution that is able to track um, every information in the whole battery research process and also battery production process 
um, and is able to link all the data together so it can be really analyzed later on. Um, we are part of Material Digital, um, but we are also part of the Brotzeit cluster, like a very process-oriented um, research cluster in the uh, battery field. Um, so we are together working on this on our side on the digitization part, um, but we have a lot of battery experts also in it, um, naming like the Theo Braunschweig, uh, INM and Hochschule Aalen, who are also validating what we are doing and who are giving like most important uh, feedback on usability and their processes uh, in general. Yeah, and then we also have the, the uh, KIT uh, to help us also in the ontology development. Um, so I already explained our main purpose is to generate um, or to develop a system that can track uh, all possible data fields uh, in the end and allowing comparability of data across projects and also enabling um, like a collaboration between partners because that at the moment is also not really done in in a database type of way, uh, but just by like sending documents uh, to each other um, and then formulating a publication out of it. And the raw data that led to this publication is usually uh, then somewhere stored and not looked at at all in the uh, in the future. And in this platform, we also want to develop certain um, services that help in the battery research process, um, meaning that we really want to um, we want to leverage the process, we want to do it more efficient. So the platform is not a burden to the user and to the researcher, um, but helps them really in their work. So uh, that are like the main components and um, our partners are generating a lot of data um, that resembles like a typical research process in the battery field, but also including a large variety um, to keep track of if we are really able to do everything with the platform. And yeah, you can go to the next slide then. Um, so we will then go a bit deeper into like the current state. Uh, where are we? Uh, so we really focus in DigiBatMath on lab scale and pilot scale production. Uh, as you might have already seen, there's already the project Damaste started. Um, it's kind of a follow-up project of DigiBatMath, but at the moment running at the same time. And there we are focusing more on the production side and really the, um, uh, the production line scaling, um, covering also um, raw material producers, so industry uh, participation and also battery uh, producer. And yeah, so we already defined the structures, we developed a, a cloud system that is already working. Vincent, maybe we'll go a bit later into that also and show you some, some functionalities. Um, and we are at the moment currently developing also like our ontology further. Um, and try to incorporate it as much as possible to the functionalities that we are at the moment doing. Um, and there are some other functionalities that we maybe want to go a bit deeper into that are not maybe like very specific to the ontology side, but I think they are generally interesting for everybody here. And then I think I will be finished and I will give it over to Vincent. Yes, thank you, Marcel. So um, as Marcel already introduced me. I'm Vincent. Um, I work in DigiBatMat on the development side and I'm kind of the middleman between the partners from battery research and um, our development team uh, here at AWSI. Um, and I will be presenting uh, the second part of today's talk uh, where we go into our ontology development and show uh, the platform. Okay, let us start um, with the ontology. Um, first of all, uh, the, the initial modeling. So how did we, we start to generate this ontology? Um, as most of you from the other projects will probably know, um, it's not that straightforward. 
in uh, such an interdisciplinary setting um, to do those things you have to uh, define common terms um, and you have to explain a lot of things uh, so we from the digital side have to explain how what we do works to the battery people and the battery researchers have to explain how battery research works to us um, so at the start of the project um, there were a lot of workshops and a lot of discussion on all this terminology and um, this happened with the usual tools you use in in workshops like this so uh, we were using mirror boards and excel documents as you can see uh, in the lower left corner here and uh, doing that we defined um, all the process steps uh, and objects uh, which are relevant for for our battery production ontology um, and in total we currently have um, 13 process steps modeled uh, 25 different items which you can see here on the right are, are classified into external inputs which are highlighted yellow and um, items that are generated within the process which are just white and then in addition to to the production process which you can see here we also have 29 what we call characterization method these are um, just any analysis method that can be uh, additionally performed um, on one of those items so we also uh, published a paper on this whole process and uh, the general structure of our ontology um, if you're interested uh, you can find the link to the paper um, also in the google docs um, or just message marcel or me for further information after the talk okay then at this point we had uh, some general models in mural boards and we had a lot of excel files where we wrote down uh, the different properties with their units and data types um, but how did we now get to a formal ontology um, to do that we we started out with the uh, PMDCO um, version one and um, we looked carefully at, at all the definitions in there and then decided that we could reuse um, most of the things um, but our definition of, of a property, um, uh, as we saw in those, those Excel sheets, um, diverged a bit from, from what we could do with PMDCO. So um, we took the, the PMDCO process and, and the PMDCO objects, and um, we added our definition of a property, which you can see here on the right. Um, for us, Properties are put into four different classes. Uh, parameters, which are um, just set values, um, for example, machine settings and something like this. Um, results, um, those are the results from an analysis, so uh, not the measurement from the machine itself, but an evaluation, maybe some computed value um the values from the machine themselves those are raw data and then we also have reports uh, which kind of then are um, aggregated results uh, like spec sheets or something like that um, in addition we uh, defined this concept of meta units um, this is basically just a group of different units that can be converted into one and another and we we also use this in the in the platform for automatic unit conversion, which we will show later. Okay, so then we had uh, the formal model and we had all those Excel files. Um, what was left to, uh, to do um, was to combine those things. And um, as I listed before, we have almost uh, 850 
properties. No one wanted to do this manual, so we wrote a, a small Python tool um, to convert the data in this, these Excel files uh, into both um, the formal ontology and also into a JSON format. Um, and this JSON format then is used um, to generate the data entry views, uh, which you will see in the platform. And um, this tool also has additional functionality. Um, so it, it adds data that we currently don't track in our ontology. For example, how many duplicates of an item you can use or um, it adds the conversion factors for uh, the units when they are missing and stuff like that. Okay, so now let's go into our platform and actually show how this works in practice. Um, I will demonstrate this using our demo environment, um, which if you are interested, you can also get access to and try things out yourself. Um, I will mention that later on again. Okay, so if we, we open our platform, um, we first come to a login page and after logging in, we can uh, start entering and working with data. Um, so first of all, we have the highest um, level of our data hierarchy, uh, which is the projects. So um, those are, for example, research projects, um, but can also be anything else, just like uh, machine setup or whatever. Um, and what these do is um, they cluster what we call set of experiments, or in German Versuchsreihen. Um, and um, in, in those, you can then actually manage your data. So if I um, click on this set of experiment, you will see there are different processes um, uh, which contain the data um, modeled to the, the process ontology of us. So now let us add a new process so that I can actually demonstrate that to you. Um, as you have seen in the, in the graphic from the paper before, we separate between electrode production and cell production. Um, so let us start with an electrode production process. So here I just select um, which project and which uh, set of experiment that should belong to. And then I uh, give it a name. And uh, for an electrode, I additionally need to select whether that is an anode or a cathode, which we are producing here. Um, that is important later on when we want to use those electrodes for uh, cell production. Um, there we need to differentiate between that. And then I, when I click Create Process, I guess this um, graph down here, which represents our process, um, can already see the different process steps with this activate button. Um, so what I can do here is if I did a certain process in my experiment, I click activate um, on that process and uh, yeah, okay. Now it worked. Apparently my connection was a bit slow. Um, then it will be entered into the graph and I can start editing the data. Uh, this is the view you already uh, saw in the presentation. Um, what I can do here now, I can manually um, enter data. For example, the mass of the binder I used in trimixing. Um, I can also then select the unit. For example, I can say I used one kilogram of that. And then I can keep going for all the properties. Um, as I already mentioned, we have 
quite a lot of them, so I will not um, enter too many of them. Alternatively, you can also upload files. Um, for example, I can upload an Excel file here. Uh, when I upload it, it shows up in this table down here. And what I can do with that, I can select uh, the file and I can add links uh, by just uh, ticking this box. Uh, so what that indicates is that the information related to this property is stored in that file. Um, so when I save that now and reopen it, we can see two things. Uh, the first thing, um, ah, okay. So I have to do it again. You have to click the file again to confirm actually. So what you can see now, the first thing is I linked that file to this property. Um, and also the unit here was converted because the default unit uh, for this property is set as gram and I entered kilograms when entering the values. Okay, so when I have uh, set all my process parameters, I can keep going um, with the items. I can say, okay, I used all those uh, items here you can also see what I mentioned before um, where uh, the tool adds the information uh, on how many duplicates I can use. For example, here we said you can use four different kinds of binders at the same time and two different conductive additives and then uh, multiple will show up in, in the graph here. Um, and for the items it just works the same way. Um, you again can, can open it by just clicking on them and enter your data. Um, and uh, we, we have a convention um, where those properties in the item, those are um, meant to be properties provided uh, by the item supplier. So in this case, for the active material, um, the company that produced the active material that you bought for your experiment will usually provide a spec sheet with their material and um, the data from the spec sheets uh, then gets entered into the items themselves. And if you in your experiment uh, do your own measurements, you add them via the characterization methods. For that you expand the item again, click on that plus button and then you can scroll through uh, the list of characterization methods which we modeled. Just select the one uh, that you want. Um, and for that, it's also the same thing. You open it up, you can enter the properties um, and just save it. Okay, so basically this is how you, you enter a process step. Um, then you can go through the process chain. You can also see when I activate the item of uh, the output item of this process step, this is automatically reused as the input item here. Uh, so whenever I enter data in either one of them, this will automatically get mirrored. And um, then I just continue throughout the whole process step until my experiment is complete. Um, so I will just activate the final uh, output item of this process step. What that means for the platform is that if we reach this point, uh, we have produced a functional electrode and then we can um, reuse that later when I show you the cell production process. Um, before we do that though, I want to present uh, two other methods to enter data. Um, so one of them is uh, actually very simple. It's just uh, if you click those blue buttons in one of the property windows, that will open up um, a table because um, 
the blue button indicates that this property um, has an array as a value. And what you can then do in this table, you can also select the unit um, and then uh, you can type in your values uh, either row by row by hand, or you can also just copy paste um, a whole column um, from a, an Excel sheet. So uh, once you save that table, um, all units are converted again to the default unit, and then this closes again. Um, the most interesting part to enter data is located up here, which is our template function. So uh, what this is used for um, uh, is, is for extracting values from uh, spreadsheet files with a fixed um, structure. For example, when you have um, machines that output their measurements as a spreadsheet file, um, they will always have the same, same structure, um, the same measurement in column A all the time and the same measurement in column B. And uh, when you uh, want to enter this data into the platform, you of course don't want to copy paste every single column every time. So what we provide here is the option to um, load this file uh, into this uh, template editor. Um, then for example, I want to go to calendaring. This of course is a very simple test file um, for this talk. Um, and what I can do here, I now from the list on the left can select uh, the properties which are in this type of file. For example, I can say role force uh, is located in this column here. Then I say I want to mark a column and select the starting entry. Um, but I can also uh, select um, single values, for example, the track speed. I say this is located here. Um, and then I can also select the correct uh, unit. For example, in this case, meters per minute, as it says here in the template. Um, and I can keep going. Uh, let me just select a few more of those. Um, and I can enter all the values that are um, in my Excel file. Then I give it a name and I click save. And what happens when I click save uh, is the, the file I used to create that template is sent uh, to our backend for validation. And then the backend will check if all the data types match with the properties and if the units can be successfully converted. Um, and if that works, as you have seen up here, uh, we'll get a confirmation message and now we can use this template. Um, how this works, uh, we have it, our new template here in our template list. Now we can select a file. I will just select intentionally a different file than I used for creating the template. And then I say use this template with that file and the platform will confirm that it could successfully use that template because those files contain different numbers, but the same structure. And then I can go, go check into my calendaring process. And we actually have the numbers imported here. Yes, so that's the template function. Um, we have developed this together with um, the, the battery researchers, which, um, as I mentioned, said that this is especially useful for um, importing machine data, but some of them also at their institutes um, have standard forms for uh, tracking their experiments in the lab. And um, 
if you have something like that, you can of course also use the template function for that. Okay, so now we have created our anode. So let me quickly show you um, how to continue with uh, creating a cell. So the same thing as for the electrodes, I select which project and experiment that belongs to. Um, and then, as I said, I need to select an anode and a an cathode uh, to build my cell with. And I again just give it a name. And then if the, the anodes and cathodes are, um, as I mentioned before, functional, uh, fully finished electrodes, then the process will be created. And I get this graph again um, with the process steps for the cell production. And I can just continue entering my data the, the same way as before. Okay, then looking at the time, since we still have enough time left, uh, let me quickly switch to my local development build uh, to show another functionality, which is not um, deployed yet, but um, already very far in development. So we want to deploy this within the next weeks. Um, so this is our pipeline editor function. What this is for, it is for data analysis and uh, creating visualizations. Um, it also works with a graph-based interface, um, but this graph I can um, customize. So what I can do, I can just add nodes um, which are um, sorted into three categories. So I can add inputs, I can add processing steps, and then I can add outputs. And I can simply connect them um, any way I want. And now using those input nodes, I can load uh, data from, from the database already have prepared some data here. Um, for example, in this case, um, we built actually finished battery cells, and then we performed a rate test. And I can just say, load that rate test. And we also, for those same cells, uh, we, uh, weight them. So I load the data from the weighing. Um, and then I can say, uh, perform some computation with that. For example, I want the capacity from the rate test to be normalized by the weight. Um, and then let me add a second connection between this data point and the output node. Then I can say in my output node, generate me a line plot with error bars um, where you plot the normalized capacity over the tested C rates. It will automatically generate that plot. Um, I can also customize it, for example, by changing the color of the, of the line. Um, and I can do a file export. Uh, as you can see, um, if I click this button, it just downloads the image file. I can also export to PNG or for data nodes. Um, the, the calculated values can be exported as JSON and we also plan a CSV and Excel export for that. And yes, then what I can do, I can create my custom analysis pipelines. And with the controls up here in the deployed version, um, you will be able to uh, transfer this to, to any process. 
So in this case, I selected this cell production process as input, um, but in the final version, you will be just able to switch the process with two mouse clicks, and then the same plot will be created for the other process um, or the other experiment, because you can also um, load data from different uh, processes at the same time. OK, so let's go back to the presentation. and uh, discuss um, the next steps uh, that we want to do. So first of all, regarding the ontology again, uh, we are currently working on version 2.0 um, because um, talking to, to researchers also from um, institutes outside of our project, but also working in the project and actively working with the platform. We have noticed um, some shortcomings of our current model. Um, the first and in my opinion, the most important one is that um, our structures are very static at the moment. So if we want to do, do changes to the data model or um, add new process steps or items. Um, our partners from the Battery Research Institutes, they always need to message us and then our developers need to manually include that um, in the data model. Um, so of course we did multiple revisions like that already within the project, um, but this is not, not a long-term solution because it has so much overhead and it's just not practical for day-to-day -day use. So um, what we want to do and what we are currently analyzing how to do it the best way is we want to uh, create um, a, a front end where, um, for example, the, the admin user of an institute um, can modify the processes or add new process variants um, so that you can dynamically adjust that uh, if you have a new machine or if you try a new process that you haven't done before. Um, the second shortcoming we noticed is that um, there are many experiments that require more granularity. Um, for example, you can, can see on the right already um, here we have our items again, but uh, now we also have samples um, of, of an item. Um, because when you do some analysis, you, for example, if you have an electrode, you often cut this electrode uh, into smaller samples, and then you do different analysis on those samples. And that also needs to be, be tracked, what analysis was done on what sample, and um, are certain values consistent between the, the samples or are they not? Another uh, point where granularity is important is for, for example, if you do temperature uh, measurements on different points of your item, um, you don't only need to track, I did five measurements and those are the five values I measured. You also need to precisely track um, at what point of the item which measurement was. And um, to do that, we also need um, more granularity in creating the properties, which we are working on. And the last shortcoming we noticed um, is the missing separation between the process model and the, the process execution. Um, which uh, limits the, the possibilities we have, um, A, for uh, storing the data actually um, in, a, in a triple format, uh, but also for the first point for this flexible process model adjustments. Um, and that's why in our second version, we will separate the process execution, which you see on the right here, from the process model. Uh, those are the purple boxes. 
um, and follow a, a sim similar structure to what you can find in the um, PMDCO uh, version two documentation with the uh, wild processes. Um, so yeah, this is an ongoing going effort. Um, further extensions will most likely be necessary in, in the future. And as Marcel already mentioned earlier, the follow-up project has already started and we will of course also um, continue the ontology development there. So then the next slide we can mostly skip because I already showed that live. Um, this is the visualization toolbox again. Um, maybe just a, a quick look at the, the screenshots. Of course, I only added a few notes um, in the live demo, but um, these graphs can get arbitrarily complex and then you can do very nice uh, comparisons um, between your different experiments. And last but not least, another functionality we are working on at the moment is a small demo use case um, for how to use the structured data we have for machine learning. And uh, what we what we do there is we uh, develop a tool for segmenting the phases in SEM images of battery electrodes. Um, we train those models um, based on, on the data provided by the project partners. And uh, we are currently also working together, uh, especially with the partners from the IMM um, on a publication regarding this. Um, so stay tuned if you are interested. Um, there will be more information published soon. Okay, so that finalizes my talk. Um, as I already mentioned before, if you want more information on certain things, you can always contact us. Also, if you are interested in uh, our demo environment and want to get an account, you can, can contact us um, and then we can provide an account to you. Um, of course, the system in the current version is uh, focused on battery production, but um, by simply swapping out the, the process model um, can be used in any other research field as well that has similar process structures. So uh, don't hesitate if you are interested in a corporation or anything like that. <laughs>